That makes people feel uncomfortable. This idea of personal responsibility. It's quite a, it's almost become quite a controversial, controversial idea. The idea that we are the creator of our lives because then I have to t accept responsibility for all the bad things that happen. Dave dumped me. I got fired from work. Uh, someone bumped into my car and it hurt my neck. Well, maybe, maybe that happened by default. Maybe that happened by not creating. Maybe you were just left to the randomness of reality that that maybe you're not creating and the fact that you're not creating you're you're left to the effects of your environment actually controlling you controlling your feelings and thoughts and by creating what you mean by creating is in well well if being you intentional if you woke up every morning and you truly made time to think like this okay if my personality creates my personal reality and my personality is made of how i think how I act and how I feel. If I want to create a new personal reality, a new life, I'm going to have to change my personality. And most people try to create a new reality, a new personal reality as the same personality and it doesn't work. We literally have to become someone else. So if you said, okay, let me not default and go unconscious to that 95% of who I am that's programmed. Let me become so conscious of the way I think and become so aware of how I'm going to act today. Let me decide what emotions keep me connected to my past and bring me to a lower level, a lower level of energy. Let me not go unconscious. And then if you said, okay, if a belief is just a thought I keep thinking over and over again, what thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? And with attention and with intention to begin to familiarize yourself with a new way of thinking. Meditation means to become familiar with. If you keep firing and wiring those circuits, you're going to begin to install the hardware. Repeat it enough times and it becomes a software program. That could be the new voice in your head that says, I can, it is possible. If you said, okay, when did I fall from grace yesterday? When did I, when did I lose it? Oh my gosh, it was with, at work, with my coworkers, with my ex, with my enemy, with the news, with traffic. <laughs> Acting this way is not going to make me happy. If I had another opportunity, another opportunity, how would I do it? If you could close your eyes and rehearse in your mind, mentally, how you were going to behave in certain situations. I'll give you a specific one. Anyone. So I'll give you the specific one where late, late at night, on occasion, I've eaten things that I really regret eating. Also, also another one that I'm, I'm trying to work hard on is I can be very messy. With when I travel, so my, my hotel room can look like a mess. And I don't like that about myself. And I don't know why I do it, but it's almost like you talk about being unconscious. I'm clearly not thinking about it, but that's part of the problem. And it's the same with the bloody sugar at midnight, eating, ordering things that are, and then feeling instant guilt 10 seconds after I've put it in my mouth. Well, uh, well it may be that on some level, well, you could actually be addicted to the guilt, not to the sugar. And so you, you return to the same emotional state that allows that action to reoccur. So if you said, let me decide how I am going to act, what I'm not going to do, and you rehearsed it, the research on mental rehearsal says your brain will look like you already did it that you'll be so present, the brain won't know the difference between what you're imagining and what is real. The brain will begin to change to look like the experience has already happened. Now, you're priming your brain for that behavior. Keep rehearsing it. Rehearsing it how? So give me... Well, so I play mentally, mentally rehearsing, mental rehearsal is one of these great ideas in neuroscience where you can actually install circuits in your brain, right? So everybody has done this. Musicians do it. They're playing a song in their mind all the time. Athletes do it. They're always going over their moves. Uh, dancers do it. Actors do it. Uh, so many people rehearse mentally what they're about to do. And when they do that, they actually prime their brain. They actually can change their brain and change their body just by thought alone. Physiologically change it. Physiologically change. You can take a group of people that never played the piano before and divide them into two different groups and do functional brain scans on both groups. One group, they'll come for two hours a day for five days and they'll practice these one-handed scales and chords. Now, 
You learn something new, you make new connections in your brain. You get some instruction, you get your body involved. When you get your body involved, you're going to have an experience. You pay attention to what you're doing and you repeat it over and over again. Nerve cells that fire together, wire together. You're going to begin to install new circuits in the opposite side of your brain. That's, that's common. You do the scan at the end, you see those actual physical changes. You take those people, uh, the other group, and you ask them to close their eyes without lifting a finger. Have them mentally rehearse those scales and cores, and at the end of five days, they grow the same amount of circuits in their brain as the people who actually physically demonstrated the act. In other words, they were so present with what they were doing, the brain did not know the difference between the real life experience and what they were imagining. The brain was physically changing to look like they already experienced it, they already did it. So now, you take those people, never played the piano before, they've just been mentally rehearsing for two hours a day for five days, you set them in front of a piano, and they could actually play those scales and chords. Why? Because they prime their brain for that behavior. So then if you're gonna prime your brain for a new behavior, whether you're the CEO of a company, whether you're a parent, uh, whether you're learning something, the more you rehearse it mentally, the more you prime your brain and body for the act. So you could actually practice rehearsing how you're going to change in your life. And if you keep doing it enough times, your behaviors will match your intentions automatically because you have the mind installed to do it. If you don't have the mind installed to do it, you'll go back to the same past behavior. So I play through that scenario of making the decision differently. Exactly. And rehearse it in your mind until it feels right. Until you feel like I could actually do that and go from start to finish without losing your attention. And so that it gets easier each time you do it. It makes sense. Then you're, you'll, you'll actually do it. And, and then if you said, okay, enough of this guilt, <laughs> I've, I've felt enough of it. I don't like feeling that way. I could actually break the conditioning of that emotion in my body. Can I condition my body? Can I teach my body to feel something differently? What would be the feeling that I want to feel if I was able to do it? Would it be worth? Would it be self-love? Would it be freedom? Would it be joy? Let me teach my body emotionally what a future could actually feel like before it happens. If you keep doing it over and over again, you're going to start making more of those chemicals and it's going to become easier for you to do it. It's going to become familiar to you. And that's exactly what meditation is, to become familiar with an old self, to know thyself. Become so conscious of that unconscious self that you don't go unconscious to that self. And how many times do we have to forget? until we stop forgetting and start remembering. That's the moment of change. What thoughts do I want to fire and wire in my brain? Let me become familiar with those. What behaviors do I want to demonstrate? What would greatness do? What would love do? And actually rehearse a greater, a greater way. Rehearse it enough times so that you could actually step into that footprint. Teach your body emotionally that there's another way to feel and do it over and over again. It'll become familiar to you. And so the model of change is unlearning and relearning. It's breaking the habit of the old self and reinventing a new self. It's pruning synaptic connections and sprouting new connections. It's unfiring and unwiring, refiring and rewiring, deprogramming and reprogramming, losing your mind and creating a new one, unmemorizing emotions that have been stored in the body and then reconditioning the body to a new mind, to a new emotion. Turns out if you teach people how to do that, in seven days you can see very profound biological changes if they immerse themselves into the experience. And what do those biological changes look like? <clears throat> well, um, so we run week-long events um, around the world. And I think it's so important to do events uh, in person you know, with community. Uh, because it's a flock, it's a herd, it's a school, uh, it's a collective. And so uh, that exact process in seven days, uh, we uh, take people through a very immersive experience. And we do functional brain scans or fMRIs or quantitative EEGs before they start the event. And then we, at the end of seven days, we look at their brains at the end of seven days. And there are dramatic changes in the way their brain works, very significant changes. Some of them are really outstanding changes. We uh, put, uh, teach people how to create more heart coherence. When you feel anger, when you feel frustration, when you feel impatience, when you feel resentment, your heart beats out of order. When you feel gratitude, when you have kindness and care, when you feel love for life, your heart beats in a more orderly fashion. You can actually train somebody to get good at feeling that way. And we, we use that and we see people at the end of seven days 
be able to regulate uh, their heart much better. And it's a function of really how soon or how slow we age. We take uh, blood and we measure 2,882 different metabolites in, in a person's blood. And at the end of seven days, we measure again. And I can tell you that if you're a novice meditator, really never meditated before, kind of your first event, uh, and you go through that seven day process, at the end of seven days, there's so many biological changes that are taking place in the collective, in the community, not just one, not just two, the majority of people, and I mean a significant majority of people, suggesting that their body literally is living in a new environment, in, in a new life. And there are chemicals in their bloodstream in terms of information that wasn't there prior to the event. In other words, some way, without taking any drug, <laughs> without any, taking any exogenous substance, uh, without changing their diet, without changing their lifestyle in any other way except going through this process, eating the same foods that they typically eat, that at the end of seven days, there's chemistry, there's biology that suggests that somehow their biology is changing significantly. Um, we measure gene expression. Uh, I can tell you that you can change your gene expression in seven days. Uh, we measure the microbiome, and um, once again, seven days, there are dramatic changes in the microbiome, uh, and the mind somehow is making uh, significant and, and effective changes in our, in our body. So um, our research is pretty outstanding because um, a seven-day uh, intervention uh, that's producing these effects. Uh, there's, there's not a whole lot of drugs that, that are as effective. And we've discovered that the nervous system makes a pharmacy of chemicals right now that works better than any drug. That's what we've discovered. And it's all within you. I am a fixer in my friendship groups. And what I mean by that is I'm someone who probably over-involves them, themselves in trying to help friends change stuff. Which, gift and a curse. Often times a curse. But um, I often get, because I love someone and they're close to me and I want the best for them, when, when I see that they are experiencing a recurring pattern of behavior or habit um, that is causing them unhappiness, loneliness, to miss the goals they have in their life of becoming a, you know, a husband or a wife or a partner or whatever it might be, I have a growing sense of um, frustration because and I and that sometimes exerts it, it's it, that sometimes manifests itself as trying to you know fix and help and give advice and change them. You must experience that in a different way. You're much smarter than me. You must experience that in a different way when you meet people that you can see are having these recurring patterns of behaviour. And when you see that in them, has there any has there any ever been frustration on your part? Have you ever been frustrated that change hasn't happened in someone that you loved? God, I, you know, I think it's, I think it's such a noble act to change. And I, and I understand how hard it is to change. Uh, I understand that process. So I think the greatest thing that I could ever do for someone is to show them what change looks like. It's so much more profound than anything that I could ever say. Um, and I would never offer my opinion to them. I would love them unconditionally because I maybe see a part of myself uh, that I've changed and I understand how hard it is to change or or I understand that they'll they're gonna have their moment uh, when they're ready uh, to change and so I think it's I think it's really interesting because what I've learned over the years is that no new information can enter the nervous system that's not equal to the person's emotional state <laughs> you can give them the answer the right answer to the problem and they won't hear it because it's not relevant equal to the emotion that they're experiencing. What we've learned is that if you take people in, just say seven days, just cross the river of change, go from the old self to the new self, immerse yourself fully into it, break free from the chains of those emotions that keep you anchored to the past, overcome those habits and behaviors that keep you programmed into a predictable future, um, overcome um, all those aspects of your beliefs that keep you stuck in a certain state in terms of how you're thinking and those hardwired perceptions. Seven days, break free. And, and normally the person has the answer. 
uh, to their own question. I think that's when it becomes really relevant, when you have your own insight, your own epiphany, when it's your own truth, because you've, you've worked to get beyond it. People, when they analyze themselves or analyze their life within some disturbing emotion, when we looked at the real-time brain scans, uh, we saw that they were actually making their brain worse. They were driving their brain further out of balance, uh, overthinking, overanalyzing. Uh, and so when you analyze something within an emotion, an emotion is a, is a record of the past. So you're thinking in the past, the solution could never be there. Free the person from that emotion. And of course, they, they, see, they, they see it from a greater level of consciousness.